Hey, hey homos, homos. <laughs> welcome back to season four. We are back. Oh uh, my god, I've missed you. Yeah, not, we not, have missed I mean, you. Oh, yeah, I spend every day with you. Yeah, I, yeah. I miss you even when we're apart I just miss, for a second. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> we have missed you. It's not felt the same. Like, we got into a real routine with season three that you guys became, you know, part of our weekly lives. A weekly lives. fixture. A weekly like fixture. we are in yours. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we it's we've had a bit of a gap. Um, we've been up to a few things. We have. Well, firstly, there hasn't been too much of a gap if you follow our YouTube channel because we've been doing helpful homos, haven't we? Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've, what have we been up to? We went to we went to Brighton Pride. Brighton Pride. That was so much fun. We got to see Girls Aloud, Girls Aloud. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why I have to say it in a bad Irish accent. Um, and S Club. It's not S Club. S Club 7 in the worst outfits ever. They look like oh jellyfish. They looked so flammable. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and... Yeah, Joel, you you love that. Uh, tell you what, we didn't love about Brighton Pride the village bit. That yeah. was not safe. That so, was a yeah. bad far away from a stampede. Yeah, it wasn't good. If you've never been to Brighton Pride, all the prides I've been to, like Manchester, Leeds, I think that's pretty much it at this point. Um, but they've all been in one location. With Brighton, it was split between two locations, sort of a festivaly vibe in a park. There were yeah. rides, there was food, and a stage, and then the village which was just like they shut these streets down and people were drinking in the street but it was rammed the yeah. street part and that wasn't i didn't like that part i preferred the festival it was good part. that the full city got involved though um, yeah i mean it's a very great if you're not from the uk it's a very gay friendly it's like the gayest place in the uk brighton yeah. all the gays and lesbians flock there yeah um but yeah, so for that reason, it felt really nice and really welcoming. But yeah, the village, I thought was disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> I liked the the festival part. Yeah, we've also been to Edinburgh for the Fringe. Yeah, Edinburgh um, Fringe. Which we've done for the last few years, haven't we, while, yeah. we've, while we've been together? We love going to Edinburgh Fringe. We go every single year for a few days, watch some comedy shows, eat, drink and be merry. Musical, and it's just... Musicals, it's camp. It's camp. Yeah. It's really um, fun. We've been to we went to Wales. Wales with GMC. Yeah, we did an adventure day. Um, some climbing, high yeah. ropes, archery, you know, all that kind all of All with jazz. Keegan's clients. If you don't know GMC, gay man's coaching, it's Keegan's business. So we went with his clients and it was a really team building day, bonding. Yeah. We've had days out with the kids. Yeah. We went to Ripon Cathedral. There's not much going on in Ripon. There's a cathedral yeah. there. We literally just went, had an ice cream, looked at the cathedral and went, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Done. Um, yeah, we had we've had a few days out. So it's been it's been restorative. It's been restorative, it's been fun and it was sort of ready at September. Why is it that even as adults, September, the start of the back new school, school year, back to school, <laughs> you're like back to work, back to school. Um, I think because everybody's been on their holidays, haven't they? Yeah. Usually over July and August, it feels like work kind of slows yeah. down a little bit. So mm -hmm. it's, yeah, and then people go, right, you know, let's stop dicking about now. Yeah. And we're running out of time to make 2024 good. Well, it's nearly Christmas. <laughs> it, so, we're yeah. into the, the burr months. <laughs> the burr months, which are my favourite. So this is the month of my birth, guys. Just... Just don't forget, put it in your diaries, 25th of September. It won't let you forget, don't worry. <laughs> We're having a full month celebration. Oh, we are. We've got a jam-packed September as well, haven't yes, we? Yes, so. celebration of Joel's birth. Yeah, thank you. We're staying with giraffes. Oh, we also started watching Game of Thrones. Oh, yes. Well, you've watched it many a time, read the books. He's the biggest nerd of Game of Thrones. I've actually got a bit of the ick because we're watching it. I've never seen it. So I'm watching it for the first time and Keegan hasn't watched this in years, hasn't read the book in years, but he'll be like, oh, what, wait for this bit. And I'm like, how do you remember? How do you remember? It was a cultural moment, right? And it'll be like this person in the books, it does this, it does this. And I'm like, this is bordering on Icky now. <laughs> yeah, well, I've banned Joe from asking questions. Yeah, which but, is really hard. But then there'll certain bits will happen, you know, and you go, you know, when you're looking at someone like expectantly. And I, we did it, we were watching an episode last night and I said, what about that? And he went, most of this goes over my head. <laughs> When they're discussing strategy and blah, 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 all these names, I'm not good at remembering names of people in TV shows. I'll be like, oh, the bald one, you know. Or, yeah, so Game of Thrones is definitely not I think I need good. to sit down with a cheat sheet of all the characters so I can learn their names. That sounds really fun way to watch yeah. TV. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what to suggest because I just don't remember names. And but. yeah, at the end of every episode, when I say, are you enjoying it? I love it. Can we watch another episode? Yeah. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's just vibes. It's, it's no plot or vibes. Yeah. Well, do you know what? Game of Thrones is basically pairs of people going to places. Yeah. And then a thing happens. Yeah. And then it's other people in transit to another place. Isn't that just a story? Li- that's literally <laughs> what Game of Thrones is. Yeah. Well, well, I'm enjoying it. It's not action after action after action. A plane, bus, another bus, club. Yeah. It's not that. Not that. It's just sort of... But people kind of think it's that. It's very and war-y. there's dragons as well. Yeah. war war Oh, very war Dead how, war-y. How would you describe <laughs> Game of Thrones? war It's because Joel's recently got into fantasy books, so mm-hmm. I've eased him in. And I did say to you that I wanted to watch something sort of medieval vibes, because I'm not... I've. I don't really consume much medieval stuff and I feel like this is what? Do you know what's missing from my life? Medieval. Medieval. You just snotted everywhere. (laughs) I don't have any renaissance. I have uh, no renaissance in my life so I I want to get a bit more Baroque in my life. Well, if it's not Baroque, don't fix it. (laughs) Good one. If only we had a sound effect for that. We do have a sound effect for that. Uh, I can do that one. Yeah, not a good joke. But anyway, there's our little catch up, guys. What have you been up to? Leave us a comment on YouTube if you What's watch that? on YouTube. Is it? Ah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> leave a pause for response. Um, but yeah, we hope you're happy and healthy, and that you're ready for another season and home full off. of fun and maybe a sprinkling of education um, and inspiration and aspiration. <laughs> All the Asians. Asians. Domination. Oh. No, not domination. Not domination. (laughs) It's not that kind of podcast. (laughs) It's not that kind of podcast. Um, But yeah, we've got a very fun episode today. It could be quite deep. We don't know where this is heading because we've asked basically for people's coming out stories just so we can all share in this because I think Mm. it's everyone has a story, don't they? Regardless of coming out. Yeah. But especially in the gay community, when it comes to coming out, if you ask someone their coming out story, there's always a story there. Yeah. It's very rarely someone goes, oh, everything was simple and easy and I just, you know, yeah. slipped out of my mum and uh, here I was, gay, jazz oh, hands. Wow. <laughs> she coughed and I fell out gay. <laughs> Covered in sequins. Yeah. Um, Do you know what I mean? But before we get into the episode, parish notices, yeah. obviously. Um, obviously. Firstly, you may have seen... Ooh. If you're watching on YouTube, you will see what's on camera right now. So for the people who are listening, Joel, what are they? We have the very first, the world's first, Happy Healthy Homo socks. Woo. So I'm currently modeling. Let's do an audio description. Currently modeling white socks with a Happy Healthy logo around the mid ankle. And then at the top, you have a band of a gay flag. Gay flag. Gay flag. Pride Gay flag. Gag. Um, a rainbow joke. The it's rainbow. It's That's the rainbow. It. Sorry, I missed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm functioning on uh, on only two coffees today and I normally need four. Okay. Um, but yeah, so we've got Happy Healthy Homo socks, which you guys have been asking for for a long time, ever since we did the mugs. Yeah. People were like, we should have socks. Yeah. Now so we listened. We obviously get mug shots from people who... I have a Patreon members who get our Happy Healthy Homo mugs, as yep. you can see on the shelves at the back. Um, we kind of feel a bit weird asking for feet pics, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. So, I mean, if you want to send in pictures of these socks, you can do. Yep. You can buy them. Um, if if you are a Patreon member, you had first access to our socks. You've already, you've known you've about, know this. about them for you've ages. Them. If you've been on the newsletter, you'll have known about them for ages. Um not quite as long as the Patreon guys, but before you guys, you, basically you guys are finding out last about them. Yeah. So um, they're they're up for sale. You can find them on our website, happyhealthyhomo.com. Mm-hmm. Um, they're nineteen ninety nine. That includes shipping, um, unless you're in Australia, because that's obviously ridiculous. Just get if you are from Aussie, yeah. you want some, get in touch and we'll sort that out. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, in, includes the shipping to the US, Canada, UK, Europe, Europe. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that that's covered in there. There's only. How many pairs? 100 pairs available. So they are limited edition. Once they're gone, they are gone. So get them. If you want them, get them there. Obviously, they're probably not already, there's not even 100 pairs left because obviously Patreon guys and newsletter guys. We're starting out with 100 pairs. So um, we need to look at the numbers. But there are definitely some still available. We don't have that many patrons. (laughs) Uh, We should do. Sign up to our Patreon, guys. Um, But yeah, there's a discount as well if you buy multiple pairs. So just check it out. But yeah, if you're not sure about shipping, if you're not from Europe, Canada, 
Canada, America, UK, then just drop us an email and we can calculate shipping manually because um, we don't want you guys to miss out. But it's just the yeah, and it's we don't just the way just the world slap works. An exorbitant fee, yeah. on it either. So exactly. Uh, so we're very excited about those. We are wearing them in our episodes point the toe, now. Point the toe. Point the toe. Demi plie. Um, so yeah, I don't check know them what out. a demi plie is. I don't know. It's something to do with pas de beret, pas de beret, step ball change. I don't know. Step ball, kick ball. Kick step ball, ball change, step ball change. You can do a step or a kick. You, know, you can't kick people on Strictly Come Dancing. That has been... Not anymore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, we're laughing at people's demise. We're not laughing at no, that. No, or be, uh, people being kicked either. Yeah. Yes. Bad Graziano. Bad. Um, I don't think we're, na- we're naming people. Oh, we do, he's been named as, and he's admitted to it. All right. So bad. Yeah. We don't know the full story. Can, can. Anyway. Um, <laughs> because you can, can, can. Um, well, you can, can, can. That's why he's been what? kicked off anyway. Okay. <laughs> In your accent, can and can't sound very different. Oh, uh, say, sound, I'm, sorry, sound the same. I'm sick of the accent abuse. Joel thinks that bomb and bum sound the same. <laughs> they sound the same to me. Bomb, blow things up to bomb something. <laughs> bum, the thing at the top wow, of your legs. Wow, so different. The verb of bumming and bombing. But I think it, with can and can't, in the southern accent, I say can with a short A and can't with a long A. So they sound very different. In yours, it's like can and can't. And it's like... I don't very... say can't. Yeah, I say do. can't. Can't. <laughs> oh, uh, I can't be- I oh can't. my gosh, guys. This, get this yourself is... a partner where you find their accent really funny because it's just so this cute. This is literally our life. Yeah. Anyway, um, on to coming out. <laughs> on to coming out. Coming out. <laughs> yeah, see, you say that. Anyway, you say it different to okay. me. Okay. And different is good. Okay, diversity, champion. Yeah, champion diversity on this podcast. Oh, the Olympics was on as well when we were on. Oh yeah, Olympics was fun. Yeah, we, we did enjoy the Olympics. What was your favourite Olympic sport? Um, not shooting. No. You can't see anything. And not breakdancing. No, not a good addition. Not break dancing should not be in the Olympics. No, I mean they made a meme of that Australian girl. Yeah, I mean break dancing is not a sport. It is an art. So why is it in the Olympics? Yeah, but you could say the same for synchronized swimming, and that's been in for that is a sport, babe. You've seen their core oh, strength. Yeah, I'm not saying that what they do. I'm not diminishing what they do because they're incredible. But it is artistic. It's as well. It's an artsy thing. Yeah. I also didn't like, and I know they've done this forever. But the gymnasts do, they make them dance. Oh, yeah, the girl gymnasts make them dance. The girl gymnasts have to shake their ass as part to score some points. And wear glitter. And the boys, they just do the the gymnastics. Yeah, it's a bit misogynistic. Yeah, it just felt a bit, I don't know, I didn't like, I didn't, mm, it's in 2024 now. Yeah. And I know some people will say, oh, well, the girls don't have as many disciplines because they don't have the rings and they don't have. Well, they should. um, mm, Yeah, well, yeah, go for it. Um, but I, mm. I don't see the rings are good for your shoulders. Oh, no. No. That's why all the gymnasts are young. I don't think any sports are good for your body. I can concur. Rub- yeah. Rub- As an ex-sportsman. Um, Rub- is definitely not. Yeah. But yeah, I, lo- I love the Olympics. Yeah, me too. It's and the I, only sport I enjoy. The, the, I will not, the Olympics is the only sport. The Olympics sport. is the only sport. <laughs> As in, I won't, I don't like watching, I don't like watching any of the games, like football Olympics, no, rugby Olympics, no. I like, like the athletics and I like... The dressage. Oh, equestrian. Joel, watching the dressage. I love the horses. I don't see, see that making a horse kick its legs is a sport, personally, but. Um, Tell that each, to the horse. Each to their own. Say that to a horse, you get kicked What in the I head. did find <laughs> out and I did love about, um, you know, obviously they have to get all the horses yeah. to the Olympics. Mm. And oh, yeah. All the horses that come from for the US team come on Air Horse One. That is brilliant. That is brilliant. they have specialist planes for the horses and they're called Air Horse One. Air Horse One. Love it. So there you go. That was worth the dressage. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, on that note, I think that's a very good catch up, isn't it? In it? In it. Apparently it's 2001. Um... (laughs) (laughs) I've always said in it. I don't see it as being like common. Oh, that's so bad for your fingers. Booyakasha. Wickedy wackadasha. No wonder you've got arthritis, Boo. babe. Yeah. Yeah, it's from walking around <laughs> flicking my finger like allergy. That's exactly what it's for. We're showing our age here. Yeah. Okay, coming out. 
coming out. We are going to start. We're going to jump straight in with your stories because you've heard our coming out stories. If you're a happy, healthy, homo, loyal listener, we've done an episode yeah, on, that, we did, yeah. on that. So we're going to jump straight in with one of our patrons, our beloved Dawn, who's been a patron, I think, from the very beginning. Yeah, she's an OG. She's an OG. And she's got a story about her son coming out to her. And so have a listen to this. My son was actually 14 when he came out to me. We were actually walking the halls of the hospital. He had been there for about a week. The doctors had told us they thought he had cancer and we were awaiting tests. So that night we were just walking the halls and just chit-chatting. And I had asked him if there were any girls that he liked at school. And he said no. And so then I asked him if there were any boys he liked at school. And he said yes. And told me about this boy that he liked. He said that only one other person knew, a friend of his, and that he always knew he could tell me. It was just finding the right moment. And it just seemed that that time in the hospital was the right moment. He said that was the first time he had openly said that he was gay. As I lay there in the hospital room that night, I was so proud of my son to have the courage to come out at the age of 14 and to be true to himself. I'm so glad that he felt safe to open up to, to me and to know that not only did I love him just as much, but our entire family w- would accept him exactly for who he is. Of course, I had envisioned when he was a baby of him being married and having children. And that vision could still be hold to true today. He is engaged and Um, Perhaps they will have children one day, and it just crushes me to know that some parents do not accept their children for who they are. They deserve all the love. Sorry, I did forget to mention the part of where the doctors came back to say that they were wrong. My son did not have cancer. Um, He had some sort of blockage, but in the end, everything turned out absolutely wonderful that my son was healthy and living his life openly as he should. He went back to school and told his friends that he was gay and went through high school with people knowing. And luckily we lived and he went to high school with people that were, for the most part, people were accepting. Um, So best of luck. Thank you so much for having this platform. I have to say I've learned a lot and I think you guys are just absolutely wonderful. Oh, Oh, Dawn. It gets me all emotional. Dawn, you are like what every parent should be that i from what i know i don't know specifics i'm sure you'll go i'm not perfect joel but you literally that story is like that is how every parent should be when their child comes out to them and down to the fact as well that there was no big coming out Mm. it was just you just said oh do you are you are there any girls you like are there any boys you like like it wasn't a thing of like, what's your label? Tell me, come out to me, declare yourself to me. Yeah. It was just like, oh, Dawn, chef's kiss. You're brilliant. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that's that's the, the big thing about coming out, isn't it? About not making it about mm. anybody other than the person who is coming out. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and, do, uh, and, yeah. and, and, and doing it in a, rather than, are you gay? Yeah. Is a, why are you gay? Yeah. It's yeah. very, like, it's it's very confrontational, isn't it? Yeah. Are there any girls you like? Are there any boys you like? Yeah. Um, it's, just downplaying it. it. it just, yeah, it just feels a lot less, yeah. um, like, ag- not ag- aggressive, but you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Well, yeah, aggressive is, because uh, no one knowingly does it in an aggressive, well, if they're a nice person, a good parent, yeah. they don't knowingly do it in an aggressive way, but it does come across aggressive when someone outright asks you, are you gay? It like, kind of puts you on the back foot, doesn't definitely. it? Definitely. Uh, well, because also it's, it's asking someone to like make a statement of who they are as opposed to just saying, oh, I'm interested in a boy or a girl. Like it just... I know you can zoom out and go, well, you're saying the same thing, but it's the manner in which you're doing it mm. just feels so much more doable. Don makes a good point in there about, um, you know, parents just accepting their kids. and mm. But, I, you know, some parents don't, you yeah. know, my, you know, my, my mum didn't. But I also think, like Don's alluded to there and shown in her, the sharing of her and her son's, you know, coming out story, um, it's, it's, it, it's, when parents do that, it's because their picture of what their child should be. Yeah. You know, Dawn said, I had these I had visions of he would mm-hmm. do this, he would get married, he would have kids, which as she said, he still might do. Yeah. But people create these images. And that's why when, pe- you know, kids don't do the job that their parents yeah. want them to do, they're disappointed in them. It's, yeah. They're not necessarily disappointed in their kid. It's because yeah. they've created these expectations and they can adjust to them for, yeah. for whatever reason. Well, and I think a bit of a mind-blowing thing for parents and i'm not one so i'm speaking like from my relationship with my parents i know they've had to go hang on 
we have never ever had any right to grandchildren ever mm. and when you're planning your life even from a kid you go i'm gonna have kids and they're gonna have kids. i'm gonna be a grandparent actually all you can control as a human being is whether or not you have kids mm. full stop no one has any right to be a grandparent that's never within your control to say one day i'm gonna be a grandparent no it, you, you might do if your kids have kids yeah. but and i think this is where we growing up need to teach people that all they can control is whether they have kids because i think so much angst from parents when their kids come out it seems to always revolve around oh but i was going to be a grandparent and what? i'm mourning the loss of the exactly grandchildren but in I'm reality never... you never had any control over whether or not you have and grandchildren also we live in 2024 like you can have kids yeah exactly and that was the nice thing for that dawn acknowledged as well of like they still might have kids just because you're gay doesn't mean you're never going to get mm. grandchildren but I still think like people need to acknowledge that you never have any control whether you have grandchildren. You can control whether you have kids, but you don't control whether you have grandkids. Let's do another one. Yeah, so this is Rossi, and this is coming out story to his mum. Hi, guys. Big fan of the podcast. Um, just wanted to share my coming out story with my mum. Uh, when I was 19, I sat her down and said... Mum, I've got something really important to tell you. And obviously I was nervous, you know, she's Christian and I thought it would change our relationship. And she sat down and looked at me very seriously and was like, what is it? Like she looked really worried and it just made me more worried to tell her. And then um, I eventually told her that I was gay. And then she said, oh my God, Ross, I thought you'd murdered someone. Come here and... She gave me a, a hug and said she loves me no matter what. And it was a really, really special moment for me because I was really expecting her to change her views of me. But ever since then, she's been amazing. <laughs> that made us laugh when her reaction. That yeah. is... Uh... Well, it goes to show, doesn't it? Like, everybody always thinks the word... Like, yeah. Ross, I thought she was going to... You know, our relationship was going to change. I thought yeah. she was going to... As she thought he'd murdered... Yeah. Like, everybody always thinks the worst. Definitely. It's, it is um, c- catastrophizing. It's, yeah. It's like the key thing that we all do. And I think we forget as well sometimes, the, uh, this doesn't apply to everyone, but mums usually know. They usually know, even if they don't want to know. Mm. And, they, and they bury it under the... I'm not saying that they, they know and they're okay with it, but I, I feel like mums usually just know these things particularly with sons i don't know why a mother-son relationship Mm. from what i've heard most people whether i've spoken to mums with gay sons or other gay guys they've been like but my mom obviously knew and or she took me aside and was like and my mum knew deep down like she didn't know for sure but it didn't come as a shock to her yeah um but well done as well rossi for like sitting sitting your mum down and having a conversation i did mine via text like i don't know how anyone can physically sit in front of their parents and come out to them. Oh my, and I've got a great relationship with my parents, but I'm like, that was too much for me to do. So congrats to anyone who's done it face to face. Well, there's two different ways that, well, three, including you, of, of ways that it's been done there. Yeah. There is no right way to come out. I think that's important to remember. Yeah, you've got to do what's um, best for you. Yeah, exactly. It is, and it is about you. Mm. I think that's what's so horrible about when people get outed because yeah. all, it's all taken out of your hands and it's a thing about you. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, yeah, that's that's why it is so important to do it on your terms, yeah. whatever that is. Definitely. Yeah, so we've, we've heard there from people coming out when they were younger. Mm-hmm. Let's have a listen to, this is Peter, who's uh, gearing up to come out to his children. Grown he's up 50. children. Yeah, he's 50. Hi, yeah, just saw you call out for... Um, people who the coming out stories so i'll call myself peter i'm about to turn 50 and about to come out to my kids what i found really interesting is um i want to be i want to find resources that i can give them so when i tell them which i've got a lot of fear around um my biggest fear i guess is like i'm carrying this really heavy burden and that i'm going to transfer that burden onto them so my kids are teenagers and early 20s so it's going to be tricky for them as well but in terms of trying to find support groups trying to find information i can give them directing them to a website here's a book you can read or audio book you can listen to a podcast there just doesn't seem to be anything it doesn't seem to be anything to support. Well, you know what, Peter, you're in, you're in the right place because we've got here a man who came out to his kids, not quite teenage yeah, and grown were, up. They were they were <laughs> quite a lot younger. Yeah. Um, 
And hopefully with like, we'll talk about this in a second, but hopefully if any of you listening know of any resources that Peter can sort of point his kids to about like having a gay dad or something, then let us know because by the sounds of this voice note, he's saying that there, are, there are no resources, but I'm sure there are. Yeah. So you guys leave a comment on YouTube or drop us a DM. We could maybe share it on our stories or something. And yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, I, 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 I hear what you're saying there that, you know, it's something that you, you kind of handing it off to, to your kids like this burden, burden that you've been carrying um and I, I i just i don't know if that's that's a way to look at it like it's a case of i'm actually sharing something with you about me that i've mm. not shared to other people you the, the kids don't have to walk around banging a drum going my no. dad's gay no. hi i'm john my dad's gay no. like that's not how how it is um you know obviously your relationship with your kids won't change from from your end um and i'm sure you've you know you've raised your kids to be good people who are accepting of people from different backgrounds and different you know who who live their life however they live it um so i think this is where you've got to have faith in other people in mm. in peter's case in his kids in you know when you come out to friends family you've got to give people the opportunity yeah. to react in a certain way this is why so many people don't come out yeah. because they go or oh, they'll react this way and they'll i think i always think you're doing somebody a disservice mm. um and and then even if they do react badly you're holding on to that yeah. and that's not your problem yeah well i think yorm is preparing for the worst which is sort of a good thing to do but also you don't want to micro you don't want it to feel like you're trying to micromanage how your kids are feeling which i know is not what you're trying to do but just in that they're teenagers and grown-ups that they will know how to research these things for themselves like if they need to and i think it's great to have that in your back pocket if you catch yeah. one of them struggling to go oh i found this yeah. club or this this website this charity that you could maybe talk to but i wouldn't come out to them and go and here are loads of resources that you can also because that that is a test of their you know adulthood or coming yeah. into adulthood or some of them are adults and yeah i think like he said you want to hopefully you've raised them in a way that they are going to react in a good way but i just think you don't want to prepare for the worst and go i'm going to come out to them i'm going to give them these resources tell them to contact this yeah, person it's, read it's, this you, book. you've not got cancer no do you know what I mean? Like that's what that you. It sounds like the same thing that you do when you've got cancer. Yeah, kids, I've got stage four cancer, and this is a leaflet on how we how we deal with it. Yeah, on palliative care and things like. Like whoa, whoa! Yeah. Like this is. Do you know what? I finally, I'm I'm okay with sharing this part about me. Yeah. This is a really happy moment for me. I'm really excited to share this with you, and I want you to be a part of my life. It's very different vibes. It is, but I understand why you, you're doing it. It's because you're a good dad and you love your kids, so you yeah. want to like equip them with the tools they need in case they struggle. But that should be in case they struggle. But not the, the, the thing with you, know, I'm sure you know, I'm like I don't want to teach grammar out suck eggs, but you, kids follow actions not words so if you're really sad i'm really sorry to do this to you mm. like they're gonna be like how dare you do this to me whereas it's like dad is really happy mm. dad is really happy if it looks really and and yes as a teenager or you know you wouldn't hope so in their early 20s but as a teenager you might think oh they might be a bit embarrassed to have a gay dad you know i remember taylor going to school and she was like uh what if people make fun of me for having a gay dad uh, and again i was like you, if you don't want to tell anybody that you've got a gay dad, mm. that's absolutely fine. I'm not going to turn up to school in a pink <laughs> convertible with RuPaul on the front. Um, do you know what I mean? Going, oh, yeah, you're right, where's Taylor? Like, that's not what's going to happen. So it's... You, you would if you could. I mean, I would if I could. I would if I could. Um, to be fair, she would love that. Yeah, she would. <laughs> well, that's testament. Like, Taylor is completely different to that now. So please take away from that story as well that maybe it started as well, she like... Was oh. that, that was when she was going into high school at 11 years old. Yeah. And now she couldn't be prouder to have... Have okay, Dan. Yeah, no, they, 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 she, I was up on a wall at school yeah. with LGBT. Oh, and she's gotten people. into fights as well with people who've said anything homophobic. Not yeah. proper fight, but as in she's stood up for having a gay dad. She's not like coward and gone, yeah. oh yeah, I'm being... Like when that has happened once at school, Yeah, yeah. she's shut it down straight away. Like it's... And I think she's all the stronger for 
having a gay dad. Yeah. Um, because her relationship, because she loves her dad. Your kids yeah. love you. Yeah. You know, your parents, parents love you. Pa kids love parents. Like yeah. it's, I mean, that's why it's back to what Dawn said earlier. It's sad when people, um, you know, don't accept, when kids yeah. don't accept parents or parents, that, that it's a sad thing. Definitely. Because it, you, it's, nothing changes it's, no. it is really yeah. it, is, it is really sad but you're a great dad Peter for doing that and 100%. I absolutely think you should do that for yourself for your peace of mind keep it in your back pocket but don't lead with that like keep that see how they react over the next few weeks and then judge it yeah, from there. This is a happy thing take, yeah. the, take the lead definitely this is a, this is good there's thinking. no support group need like this sh I mean I can see both sides maybe there would be with certain kids and certain, like maybe it would be a traumatic thing but also should we be normalizing support groups for people with gay? Like, it depends what you view a support yeah. group as, I suppose. If it's a, a thing where people can sort of go, oh, I've got that experience as well. Let's chat about it. But I just imagine like Alcoholics Anonymous, like a support group for like wives of alcoholics where they're like, oh, my life's so terrible. And it's like, no. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> let's absolutely. Not, let's view it as a, a positive rather than a, a negative. Yeah, I mean, and I do think it's important for us to address, because we're talking about coming out, right? Mm -hmm. It's 2024. People will say, do you need to come out anymore? You, you see this all the time when athletes come out now, so-and-so's mm. gay. I don't care. I don't care. This is why, why we still need to come out is because gay people are continuously and they're, they're put back in the closet. Mm. We as gay people, LGBT people have to, the closet is built around us that we have to escape the assumptions of the general population who are predominantly, who are straight because they're, they're, we're a minority. I'm not saying that that should change. I'm not saying that people should assume that someone is gay, because that would be like, that would be daft given the numbers. Yeah. But don't complain when people have got to come out, because when you say to someone, oh, who's your partner? Yeah. You know, when you say, well, they, they will have a wife, or they will, you, 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 these assumptions, people have to then come out and yeah. break those. Well, like my friend, I don't know if I shared this on a podcast, but she put on her stories that she rang... I think the internet provider to talk about like adding a partner to a bill or something like that. And uh, she said about adding a partner and they're like, oh, what's his name? And she was like, it's just so annoying that the go-to, like the, the training at these companies should be, if you don't know the, the gender of the partner, then use they pronouns mm. to say, oh, what, what's their name? Like I did with an estate agent, I said yeah. partner and she went, oh, and what's their name? And I was like, cause I was gearing myself by going, what's her name? Yeah. Um, and it's, it's a small little thing, but yeah. you're right. Society is geared towards heteronormative things, which I, of course I, they I are. And I do think, but, it, and, I do, and I'm not saying dismantle that. That's ridiculous. No, but I, you're right. It would be dismantling it if you were to be like, oh, what's his name? Or to go too far the other way. But when you're just going, there is literally a word that it, we use for someone I, if you're I, not sure on their gender, I, which is they. I think <laughs> what gets my back up is when people say, we don't care, we don't care. And you do care, Karen, because yeah. I see you... Uh, doing a double take and whispering to your friend if I hold my boyfriend's hand in public. Mm. You know, when someone, when you check into a hotel and they see two two guys and they go, oh, oh you've it, got a double room. Do you want double twins? Room. Did you want <laughs> twins? No, we're fine. You know, or the fact that they make laws in countries where I can't go and be me mm. because I am gay. People do care. So I'm not saying that we sh that we need to, you know, and also they're not coming out for your benefit. Yeah, we, they're coming out for their benefit. We're not. I'm not saying change the way the world is. Like mm. there, I know there's lots of people. I'm not a revolutionary, uh, <laughs> uh, but what I am saying is, don't then moan when people come out. It's the you're ramming it down our throats thing, and I shut up, <laughs> ran over. <laughs> Um, that and that's why coming out is important and it well, still yeah. is important and we still have to come out in 24 and 2024 and i would imagine that we still have yeah. to come out in 3024 oh, as well probably. it just reminds me of game of thrones keegan uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh i'm sure now this is based on assumption that i haven't heard anyone say this but you hear it with media where there's been like one set of gay characters so far where there's like sex scenes between the gay characters there's been multiple straight sex scenes and i can imagine some people would see that one gay sex scene and go see everything's trying to be diverse now and they're ramming it down our throats like oh why do they have to be gay and it's like you've literally i've seen about 10 straight sex scenes there's been one gay sex scene i'm not i, I don't i'm not saying that because i think there should be 10 equal 
No, but I'm like, don't complain about that one scene. Because yeah. I haven't heard it with Game of Thrones, but I've heard it in other things. And you're like, are you joking? The amount of straight sex scenes I've had to sit through when I'm watching a program with my parents and it's the most awkward thing ever. I'm like, you can handle this well, one like, gay would drama. Would it be less awkward to watch a gay sex scene with your parents? <laughs> I think just as awkward. Yeah. Actually, maybe a little bit more awkward. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, let's, let's, let's read another one. Okay, so this next one is from Alessandro and it's about coming out to his mum. But I think this is going to be a representation of a story where it didn't quite go to plan. Whereas like the story with Dawn was amazing um, and with Rossi as well. This one isn't quite as amazing. So Let's I think it's listen. important to hear from someone like that. So my name is Alessandro, come from Venice, Italy. And here comes the story of my coming out. I first came out to my mom when I was 20 years old. I'm currently 26 and will turn 27 in November this year. So when I uh, told my mom, like, guys, she just broke out in tears. There was a very critical and tense moment, also because I didn't feel like saying anything as she was crying. But then she took a deep breath. And uh, the first thing she said, still in tears, was, I'm terribly sorry. That's all my fault. Because it's me who gave birth to you. At first, it did feel terrible for me to hear those words, because it seemed as if she wanted to take the fault of me being gay upon herself. As if being gay was to be considered a stain, to be ashamed of, or even an inexpiable sin. But then, as she realized I might have misunderstood her words, she formulated her feelings and thoughts more clearly and said, I feel terribly sorry for you, not because you're gay, but because of all the hatred and sorrow you might have already gone through on your own and you will have to deal with over the entire course of your life. And it's all my fault. Because I give birth to you, homosexual boy, in an intolerant society. So um, in, the end, I, in the end, I could see what she meant by saying it's all my fault. Because what she was doing was basically relieve me of the fault or the sin of being gay. Um, today, I still think that she shouldn't have employed the word fault, um, as being gay is under no circumstance a fault. But I suppose she could not have used other words. She was just adopting the words of the intolerant Catholic society she had always lived in and that she had unconsciously internalized over the course of her life. She was just replicating the words and the vision of the perpetrator, which was the only way uh, she had always seen homosexuality. So in terms of sin and fault. Yeah, so I think think that, that story from Alessandro just goes to show how deeply ingrained it is in various aspects of society mm. that being gay is negative yeah and that's something that we as gay people with the help of the rest of society mm. are, have been striving to over the last 50 60 long before we were born um have been striving to to set right and it's you know it's evident there in what his mum said about mm. you know i'm i'm sad that you're gonna live in a world that doesn't you know, doesn't like you, isn't, you know, isn't there for you. You know, it's it's the kind of thing when we grow up and we're kids and when people you say, oh, don't do that, it's gay, stop being gay, mm. that's so gay. But in a, in a negative, those kind of things. And that's why, that's why coming out can be so difficult for, yeah. for, for, for us as, as LGBT people. And also misinformation, because, I mean, she's not completely wrong. It would be so much easier for us if we were straight. However, it is a lot, better now than it was 20 years ago 30 years ago 100 years ago and i've heard people say that that when they came out their parents were like oh my gosh what about hiv you're gonna get and it was like whoa like and i think uh, especially our parents generation are taking with them the thought of what it was to be gay when they grew up which was it was illegal or and then it was section 28 and then it was all these things that hiv epidemic so um which isn't necessarily the case now for yeah, all of ob- those issues obviously we have to be aware of all of those and yeah. they're all still and it's still not easy however it's not as doom and gloom as i think some parents may think it is for their yeah. child um because i think some parents need to be told like oh no it's not like i'm not gonna live a half life like i'm yeah. not gonna live a really bad life be like pushed in the shadows and i'm gonna get hiv and die that's not that's not the pro- trajectory for gay people anymore yeah. um but yeah it doesn't mean that it's not 
like the hardest yeah. or the easiest thing in the world but it's um, which is testament to you know the people that have gone before us and 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 yeah things like that and, and changes in society yeah. um but yeah. i mean that is a sweet reaction of your mum in a way you know that she cares about well, you she's that got that awareness and, yeah and she you know she obviously wants the best for her son yeah but i'm glad that was clarified because yeah that's not what you want to come out to someone and they break down in tears and, yeah and um, I, I mean it's so, there's such a uh, you you could you know throw a stick down canal street in manchester and it'd mm-hmm. hit 10 people and they'd all have completely different coming out stories yeah. some people who never had to come out mm-hmm. some people who've never spoken to their parents since they did come come out yeah some people who got married and came out later in life some people who were bullied for it. like there's such an array mm-hmm. of it and i think you know we do still have to come out and we will continue to have to come out. And I think, you know, to circle back to the start of the episode, as Dawn had mentioned, what we can do as a society, a, a society at large, as a, a community of, of LGBT people and just people individually is try to create an environment where people feel safe to be their authentic selves. Yeah, definitely. I, th- I think that's all we can do. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I say that's all we can do is if it's only a small thing, it's not, it's a big thing. Yeah. Um, but we can all, we can all strive to do that. Yeah. And I think if you're listening to this as well and you are thinking of coming out and you're, you, cause I did that before coming out, I'd want to hit everyone's coming out story just cause I felt in some way, maybe it would help me prepare for what my mm. coming out story would be, but just be reminded that as big a deal this is for you and you're thinking about your reactions of your family members and how, how awful it's going to be or how great it's going to be, whatever just remember each and every person you've heard from today has had that exact same feeling with their family. Yeah. We've had it with ours. Like we we live in our bubble of our family and friends. Of course we do thinking this is the biggest thing in the world. And I know it feels like that, but just be reassured that like hundreds of thousands of, if not millions of people yeah. throughout centuries have come out yeah. to their families. And like, we've all had that fear. The world keeps on spinning. Yeah, Life it does. Life keeps going. And it's not that deep. When you think about it, at the end of the day, you're literally just being honest about who you are to your friends and family. You're letting them in. You're letting them in. You're just saying, look, this is me. Deal with that how you want. I'd prefer you dealt with it in this way, but deal with it how you want. That's your prerogative. I'm just sharing a bit about who I am. Mm, yeah. And how people react is on them. It's not on yeah, you. Yeah, definitely. That's really important to remember. Yeah. So, um, we'll wrap this up. Um, yeah, we usually do. We usually break the the, the episode up, don't we, with a bit of rev- with a review. Reviews are so important. Um, I know you've heard us say this every week, but they really are important because it helps uh, pushes up the charts, which spread spreads the reach. That's how we get involved in um, you know the the podcast awards that we we obviously we, that we've not Still gone there yet. Out, yeah, yeah, but the, the voting is closed. So thank you if you voted for that. Yeah, thank you. Um, but that's how we reach more people. That's how we bring more people into this mm-hmm. happy, healthy, homo community. So we'd just like to give a shout out to people who've, who've um, sent a review in. So yeah. Jolie, do you want to read uh, yeah. that review? Should I just put my glasses on? So if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see me with my glasses on. Just put a gigs on. It doesn't happen often. Oh, much better. Uh, right. So give this podcast a listen. I just finished their first episode and I think these guys are onto something. Social media has done a huge disservice to the gay community with portraying unachievable expectations. I think providing an alternative to that can really help the mental and physical lives of many gay people out there who want to know that just being themselves is very okay way to live, is a very okay way to live and also be happy. I know I need to hear that. So give it a listen. I think you'll be happy that you did. That's from MC Joey Bear. Or Muck Joey Bear. <laughs> or Muck Joey Bear. <laughs> you should have done it in a Scottish accent. Yeah, Muck Joey Bear. Give this podcast a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for that. That is uh, very kind. That's what we hope this podcast can provide, just a safe space for people, just an honest chat about gay things for the gay community and allies and just empower people to be gay the way they want to be gay. Yeah, because there's no right way. No. Um, despite what people might tell you. So remember, Socks. If you want to get involved with Socks um, and you don't want to miss out on things, go check out our Patreon. Yeah. Uh, Patreon forward slash happy healthy homo. Um, you can subscribe to our newsletter if you don't want to get involved with Patreon. You can do that by visiting our website, happyhealthyhomo.com, which is also where you can check out the um, the Socks. Yep. And if you want to be involved in the podcast, sending your videos and voice notes on, which we always need. I can't stress that. If we don't get inundated with them. We we always need them to come in. Um, then go check out our socials. 
which are Happy Healthy Homo. And also our sister series, Helpful Homos. If you've got a problem or a query or a question, you want our advice on it, um, then email us hello at happyhealthyhomo.com because we'll do that, continue that every week. You get an episode of this podcast plus an episode of Helpful Homos. Yeah, absolutely. So it's good to be back. Thank you for listening. Thank you for all your support. We're really excited with what we're going to bring to you in season four. And we'll see you again next week. See you next week, guys. Bye. Bye.